morning. We offer our Mass together this morning for James Patrick Waldron. And let us begin as we begin all our prayer in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. To prepare ourselves to worthily celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, who in your providence raised up Pope St. Pius V in your church, that the faith might be safeguarded and more fittingly worship be offered to you, grant through his intercession that we may participate in your mysteries with lively faith and fruitful charity through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of Apostles. When Paul came to Antioch in Presidia, he said to the synagogue, my brothers, children of the family of Abraham, and those others among you who are God-fearing, and those uh, to us this word of salvation has been sent, the inhabitants of Jerusalem and their leaders fail to recognize Christ, and by condemning him, they fulfill the or oracles of the prophets that are read Sabbath after Sabbath. For even though they found no grounds for a death sentence, they asked Pilate to have him put to death. And when they had accomplished all that was written about him, they took him down from the tree and placed him in a tomb. But God raised him from the dead, and for many days he appeared to those who had come up with him from Galilee to Jerusalem. These are now his witnesses before the people. We ourselves are proclaiming this good news to you that what God promised our fathers, he has brought to fulfillment for us, their children, by raising up Jesus. As it is written in the second Psalm, you are my son, this day I have begotten you. The word of the Lord. You are my son, this day I have forgotten you. I myself have set up my king in Zion, my holy mountain. I will proclaim the decree of the Lord. The Lord said to me, you are my son, this day I have begotten you. Ask of me, and I will give you the nations for an inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession. You are my son. This day I have begotten you. 
You shall rule them with an iron rod. You shall shatter them like an earthen, earthen dish. You are my son. This day I have gotten you. And now, O oh kings, give heed. Take warning, you rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice before him with trembling rejoice. You are my son. To this day I have begotten you. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the way and the truth and the life, says the Lord. No one comes to the Father except through me. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. This gospel reading, and for the next couple of days, uh, they're coming from what scripture scholars ca call the farewell discourse. And that is, uh, in John's gospel, the farewell discourse is uh, Jesus is really his prayer, his discourse at uh, his, the uh, Last Supper. It actually goes on for three chapters and there's no way to systematically organize it. Um, the scripture scholars tell us what John did is he took statements from different traditions that he had and he put them all together in this one discourse. There's a uh, couple of sentences in this discourse that have uh, really gone down uh, throughout the centuries and have meant a lot to the faithful. One is, and it's a different translation, as you know, which here we're saying that in my father's house there are many dwelling places, but I know you've heard the more familiar uh, translation that in my father's house there are many mansions. Well, if nothing else, over the years, that's caused a little humor at trying to uh, say what kind of a ma mansion this particular person is going to receive after death. But really, the whole point of that is that Jesus is trying to get his disciples to focus a little more on, a, on eternity and not so much on the things of the earth. The second statement I think that is even more important but has been, I think, also misunderstood. I think especially from certain areas of the uh, evangelical Christians. And that's when he's, Jesus says, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to me except through the Father. No, I'm sorry, no one comes to the Father except through me. And what they have, kind of many of them, 
interpreted that as saying that only Christians get to heaven. There are even some Catholics who say only Catholics get to heaven. But I think we know that uh, and we've learned that that's just not the church's teaching. You know, that we uh, cannot say and there's no way that we can determine the eternal resting place or the eternal place of non-Catholics. You know, it's, it's beyond us to determine that. We also know that Jesus said in John's Gospel, we read that God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten Son. So I think it's a travesty to try to, uh, to say that, you know, only we go to heaven. It'd be nice to think of that, that we all get there. Never mind just only us, but uh, that we go to heaven. You know, the, as pilgrims, it's good for us to show how important the journey is for us and also to welcome others to join. You know, our baptismal uh, promises, one of those is that we will spread the message of Christ. So even though we cannot determine who is going to heaven, it is very important that we do spend time as Catholic Christians, as any Christian, living up to our baptismal vows and spreading God's word. With confidence in God's mercy and love, we present our needs, the needs of our nation, the needs of our world, to our loving God. For the church and all her leaders, that they may bring Christ's message to the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our St. Michael community, that we be faithful examples of Christian values. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are dealing with the COVID-19, the sick, the medical caregivers, those working to contain the spread and find a remedy that through your grace, we find moments of consolation and hope. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For James Patrick Walden, whom we remember in a special way during this Mass. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For intentions of the parish prayer line, the intentions in the parish prayer boxes, and our own special intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, we offer all these prayers through your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, and work of human hands It will become for us the bread of life.
Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. <laughs> Accept in compassion, Lord, the offerings of your family, that under your protective care they may never lose what they have received but attain the gifts that are eternal through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to praise you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. Through him, the children of light rise to eternal light, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising, the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, Every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. But through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously, may, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look upon the Eucharistic offerings of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Michael and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Frank, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family you have gathered here before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children, wherever they may be, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our day that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Safely offer each other a sign of God's peace. Lamb of God,
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are we called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter unto my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Keep safe, O Lord, we pray, those whom you have saved by your kindness, that redeemed by the passion of your Son, they may rejoice in his resurrection, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord and one another.